do you think you were perceived differently by people after after they got to know about you being diagnosed? Because I know there's a lot of HIV related stigma and discrimination. Like it just gave me a clear picture of what humanity and how ignorantly humans sort of live their lives mm -hmm. around people. So I gradually started coming out with my HIV status to close circles. People from the queer community uh, themselves created sort of memes of me with my name, address, phone number, uh, with warning messages and posted it on social media. People who are living with HIV have a lot of discontent towards themselves because of the fear of how they believe that people will perceive you're going to die and everything that you have dreamed and wanted could be taken away from you. You really start relooking at what were those things that you wanted and who did you want to be. To see the amount of acceptance and sort of empathy towards me as a person who's living with HIV, that was reassuring about humanity. So HIV doesn't kill. It's the stigma that kills. Mm -hmm. So until we start having more conversations about it and normalizing the information about HIV and how prevention works and how sort of uh, a person living with HIV has to navigate their life, it, it, it is going to be quite tough. World AIDS Day is commemorated every year on the 1st of December since 1988. There are millions who have lost their lives due to AIDS and an estimated 37.7 million people live with HIV. My guest today on the show lives with HIV and is someone who advocates for change for those living with HIV. The guest in my show today is Sriyal Nilanka. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having this conversation with me. Sriyal, how would you like to introduce yourself? Um, I usually introduce myself with my uh, professional title, but um, in an informal setting, I'm Sriyal. Uh, I am a dad to a dog okay. and with my partner, and I have a communication background, mm -hmm. but I currently work for HIV prevention. And um, that's, yeah, that's what I do. I really wanted to have this conversation with you about HIV because I feel there's a lot of HIV related stigma and discrimination. Um, so I thought it's very important that we have this conversation. Shreya, when were you diagnosed with HIV? I was diagnosed in 2013, mm -hmm. October. Um, uh, it was a very sort of unexpected diagnosis. Uh, I was conscious about using protection and not using protection, uh, but I had missed getting my routine HIV test done. So it's delayed by a couple of months. So I went in for a routine test and very unexpectedly, they asked me to sort of uh, give another blood sample. And when I inquired why that was, very hesitantly, a lab technician in front of a sort of corridor uh, gave me my diagnosis or possible diagnosis. So I then sort of withdrew myself from the hospital, went to another place, got tested, and it was confirmed. And yeah, so that's that's when that's how I. How did that make you feel? Uh, at the time, my level of information was also fairly low, uh, and what we knew about HIV was that it was something that would cause AIDS and mm -hmm. you would die. So that's what I felt. I I did think that I my life was over, that no one would ever love me and I would never be sort of wanted. And I mean, it led me to sort of attempt suicide a couple of times. Uh, however, the last time I tried to take my life, my friend took me and connected me with a psychiatrist uh which is when i started to sort of unravel my entire life along with the hiv and it's then started my journey of recovery 
from then onwards. It is quite evident that your life did change after you were diagnosed. What sort of life did you lead before being diagnosed and how did that change? So I, I went to film school in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do movies and TV shows. Uh, I came here, I started working as a TV producer and subsequently I realized the industry wasn't what I was taught uh, in the States and I didn't really have an opening. So I was extremely ambitious and I joined an advertising agency. I thought my life was going in that direction, that I was going to be working in ad films and go on to do very Movies. different things. Okay. Uh, but when I got my diagnosis uh, and um, I was told in order to sort of deal with medication, I needed to take time off, life changed life really changed like i don't in one sense right now when i look back at the life that i used to have i was just running uh, and i never took time or effort to sort of reflect on my life and my goals and where i was going but the hiv diagnosis kind of made me stop and think and has from that point onwards, given me a set of principles to live by. Mm -hmm. So they, it's a bittersweet situation. Um, I'm not saying that uh, I'm glad that I got HIV, but I learned to navigate life very differently with the diagnosis and the help of a lot of people down the line. Mm -hmm. So, And obviously it has given you a purpose, a new purpose. Yes. Because you advocate for change for those living with HIV. HIV. Um, how is it? I mean, do you think you were perceived differently by people after after they got to know about you being diagnosed? Because I know there's a lot of HIV related stigma and discrimination, like I mentioned before. How did this affect your life? So after my diagnosis, uh, I quit my job and I was at home. I was actually living with a friend at the time, so I was staying there. Uh, during that time, I was connecting with a friend and uh, we met to see each other. Um, I had ordered some food. He was nibbling off my plate. Um, and then he went back home and asked me very seriously, which is also, I feel kind of bad now, but if he should get tested now. Um, I mean, at the time, I knew that sharing meals with me wouldn't give it. Um, I think um, it was it was a misconception that he had, but that really broke me because I had gotten to a point where I was having feelings towards this person and was sort of having a hope. And what that did to me was that I, I decided that I, I'm not going to go back and live in another closet like mm -hmm. I did with my sort of sexual orientation because I had I was accustomed to living an open life. Closet seemed very claustrophobic. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to start. I knew at that moment that I was going to talk about it. I wasn't going to hide it. And I wouldn't let someone get close to me and hurt me based on my HIV status, um, but give them that information so they come in and build a connection or whatever kind of relationship under that knowledge so that we don't have to have that discussion afterwards, mm -hmm. after there is some uh, emotion attached to it. So it was a defense mechanism also. I don't think I actually understood the gamut of what being open about it would do to me. Um, but I don't regret the decision. I, I mean, I advise others against it sometimes until they're ready or if they are ever ready. But in my case, it was a, a no-brainer. I would have eventually said it, but it just gave me a clear picture of what humanity and how ignorantly humans sort of live their lives mm -hmm. around people. How do you think as a society we we should eliminate the stigma and discrimination? I think education is key. That is the fundamental uh, sort of 
changing point. And education based on evolving information about the condition, similar to how we are learning about COVID and its variants and the vaccine efficacies, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. HIV has been evolving since we first came to know about it. Treatment options have evolved. Uh, how people deal with it has evolved. So taking that information and giving it to general public about in a way that is understandable and convincing that would definitely change how people see HIV and people who are living with it. Um, Shreya, what do you think people ought to know about people living with HIV? Because there are many mis misconceptions and there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of fear, like you mentioned before. What do you think people ought to know about those living with HIV? Um, and not just about those living with HIV, but you know, the importance of getting tested early and not really putting it off. Right. So currently, uh, according to what we know about prevention, uh, HIV medication, if it's taken as prescribed, helps you control the HIV virus. And that then, as a result, doesn't transmit to another person. That is a key information for both the person living with HIV as well as people who interact with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it, it helps a person who's living with HIV to, to move away from the self-stigma that they have, that I am now a person who is, who is sort of contagious and I need to sort of quarantine myself or mm -hmm. I need to isolate myself from society. That fear is taken away by that scientific information about being uh, undetectable and untransmittable. Apart from that, about the person themselves, right now, with everything that we have gone through over the past couple of years with HIV, people who are living with HIV have a lot of discontent towards themselves because of the fear of how they believe that people will perceive them. Mm -hmm. Even if it may be true or not, that is an internal struggle that they deal with. So knowing that if someone is living with HIV, they are very much likely dealing with that own demon. Adding on to that, if you bring about social isolation, that definitely will lead to them sort of realizing that their lives are over. What I have seen in the past couple of years is that the reception towards people living with HIV has shifted. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very worried when I did the Sinhala interview uh, to look at the YouTube comments because I didn't, I didn't know what to expect at the time. I had stayed away from doing Sinhala uh, videos for a very long time. Um, but my partner read them for me and basically then I went and read them and to see the amount of acceptance and sort of empathy towards me as a person who's living with HIV, that was reassuring about humanity. So, so that was really good. And I think educating yourself and also understanding that the person who is probably living with it is going through a lot more fear and hatred for themselves will sort of guide you to be more compassionate and treat them with more respect. Um, it also is helpful to, to lend sort of support to friends and exchange information. Mm -hmm. If you know your friends are being sexually active, educating them about uh, HIV and getting tested for HIV and STIs, uh, giving them preventative methods like condoms, PrEP, or just information, and encouraging testing, that is something that people could could adapt and do because the earlier you are diagnosed with HIV, the easier it is to bring your health back to a healthy condition sooner. And it's also good because chances of that person transmitting it to other people mm -hmm. is also reduced. It's quite impressive that, you know, with your own struggle, you advocate and you want to help those living with HIV. How did you find the strength to deal with this? Because, like you said, initially it was tough. 
Yes. 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 So I took one and a half years off uh, working, and um, I wasn't isolated, but I was. It was therapeutic. I was doing different things, and came a point where I I, I still had the drive that I I have always had the ambition to sort of do something and do what I love and enjoy. I was just figuring out what I loved and enjoyed at the time. I I think therapy helped a lot to mm-hmm. come to terms with not just the HIV, but also other issues that came with my sexual identity, issues that were sort of trauma from childhood, things like that, and managing my mental health situation and bringing it to a level where I can function and not sort of burn out or crash, it really sort of helped me grow from that point. So I think really sort of reflecting on my life and seeing my mother believing in something that she thought was right and sort of making other people accept her for that, I just modeled myself after her and felt like, okay, so I'm going to do this. And if people have a problem with it, I'm not going to, I mean, I do get hurt, but it's not going to let take away from my journey. And I'm just going to do what I feel is right and what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Because really, once you feel like you're going to die and everything that you have dreamed and wanted could be taken away from you, you really start relooking at what were those things that you wanted and who did you want to be. So even after the HIV diagnosis, I went back into advertising. But as I gradually started coming out with my HIV status to close circles, people from the queer community uh, themselves created sort of memes of me with my name, address, phone number, uh, with warning messages and posted it on social media. Um, I was working in advertising, handling uh, a milk product at the time, Mm -hmm. among other things. But I really sort of stopped and thought, do I want to be sort of selling full cream milk powder for the rest of my life? Or do I want to do something that has some impact and change so that another person doesn't have to go through what I am going through. Right. It's a bit narcissistic, I guess, but I just felt like I was in a position to talk about it. Uh, My family wasn't living in the country and they're very sort of progressive in certain sense. And even with my sexual orientation, they've been accepting. They never disowned me, but there was a lot of pressure from them. But And I was living independently on my own, so I had a job, I had a place to live. I knew I was stable to take that step and not uh, sort of not have to go and depend on someone else. Mm -hmm. So I I did it. I just I changed my career and I got into LGBT advocacy at Equal Ground. Um, I still do the LGBT advocacy work. Primarily, I talk about my HIV status because I realize that that has some effect on Mm -hmm. how people perceive people with HIV as well as how people with HIV perceive themselves. So I had the privilege to do that. And it is why I thought that I should do it. So it wasn't intentional. It doesn't like, I mean, who wants to be known for being the, the guy with AIDS? Right. Like um, it doesn't make me happy to do that. It doesn't make me I mean, I'm proud about where I am, but I don't know if that I don't want to be sort of restricted to the AIDS guy. Mm -hmm. But I did it because it was an opportunity that I could take and I did. And I made the best out of a really bad situation that happened to me. Indeed. And and of course, it would have helped so many who are living with HIV and and also to raise awareness about it. How important is it, Sriya, that your family supports you? Very important. Family support is extremely important uh, for someone because 
it is essentially your health and it is about sharing a piece of your information with people that you care about a lot of people find it difficult to disclose their hiv status to their family because mm-hmm. they're worried about being ostracized for it right i know a lot of people who take medication and live with hiv without having to have said anything to their parents hiding their medication bottles in different places but but that's a very sad situation very sad situation and it's very isolating as well and it, it's your family right like obviously it's important that they accept you yeah and what something my friend told me when i was diagnosed was that it's my responsibility to give my parents the opportunity to choose how they want to react to it that's my responsibility how they choose to react and what they say and do is on them right if they are positive well and fine we continue our relationship but if they aren't it is something that they will have to live with and i shouldn't take that burden but not giving them the opportunity to react at all is unfair for them as well so which is why i told my parents uh not hoping it would go either way but lucky enough my parents were accepting and caring and supportive against all odds and to this day accommodate the nuances of my lifestyles and you know there is um there is there's a lot of confusion between hiv and aids many assume it's the same thing what's the difference so hiv is the virus mm-hmm. you contract hiv and we say you are living with hiv if you have the hiv virus in right. your body so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have aids if you have hiv if you have contracted hiv no it doesn't mean that you have aids mm-hmm. aids is a later stage of hiv that occurs when you don't take treatment because almost always when someone does take hiv medication when diagnosed they don't end up at the aids stage aids stage is found with people who haven't tested themselves or haven't taken medication uh and have progressed 5 10 years after contracting it so uh at that stage it is your immune system that determines if you are having under the aids condition and if you have other sort of acquired infections so um many people believe that you know being diagnosed is is more or less a death sentence how true is this is it possible for someone with hiv or aids to lead a normal life well normal is subjective yeah i mean like physically yeah so normal is subjective to every single person mm-hmm. but yes they can live a healthy life mm-hmm. without hiv and aids causing uh added sort of issues to their health um there are sort of side effects of the medication but those are monitored on a regular basis so Uh, people living with hiv have a good understanding about where their health status is at mm-hmm. at most given points um because of that we know that uh, medically people are healthy and can lead healthy lives and have a lifespan as anyone else without hiv and aids interfering with that and How- can they have normal i mean like perfectly healthy relationships yes if you are undetectable you can have intercourse without condoms because there's you a can... lot of misinformation um, around it yes it's very it's fair. okay let, i will say that let's just attribute it to the fact that it's new information we have less amount of people who are living with hiv in the country than most other countries so possibly the interest of that few is not has been prioritized in terms of the general public because all hiv care is government mm-hmm. uh, sanctioned and pro- provided free of charge by the government so they do allocate their resources for the care of people living with hiv but the problem is what we don't understand is that a person living with hiv almost always their entire circle is general public so without sensitizing the general public it's very difficult to put someone who's living with hiv into society and expect that 
they will get to navigate life like everyone else because it it's not it's not you've just got to learn how to people need to change as right. to how they respond to hiv um and until that happens right now hiv doesn't kill it's the stigma that kills mm mm-hmm. so until we start having more conversations about it and normalizing the information about hiv and how prevention works and how sort of uh a person living with hiv has to navigate their life it it, it is going to be quite tough um because this affects across people's sort of social life it affects from your family to the friends you have like i've lost friends and people have stopped talking to me i i sometimes am sort of greater than network but never sort of closely associated um so i'm ostracized sometimes by dating applications on and off as well because people are afraid of me so it affects your social life it affects your work life because people assume that the workplace is going to respond badly for someone who's living with hiv they're worried that they might have to give additional sort of accommodations for them but it's a very few sort of changes that are required in terms of employment it's giving that person enough time to handle their health situation by going to the clinic going in for regular investigations and sometimes at the initial stages medication can be really hard on you so support during that time by flexible hours or being able to sort of adjust work schedules efficiently these small changes that we even made during the pandemic are good enough for people who are living with hiv to be able to function in society and contribute in the best way that they could that they have capacity for but what often happens is that because we don't know how people respond and people have always responded badly people who are living with hiv are just afraid they're afraid they won't get their promotion they're afraid that their family will leave them they're afraid that if they i mean lo and behold if it's someone like a teacher who becomes positive mm-hmm. it would destroy their career and mm-hmm. someone becomes a teacher because they're really passionate about that and it will take that away from them so so these sort of intersecting problems are why life is difficult for someone who's living with hiv not everyone is able to sort of independently walk out there and claim their place uh, sometimes you might have siblings who you might have sisters who might need to get married off like no one wants to sort of be associated with that mm-hmm. so So yeah. So like you said it's a stigma that kills. Um finally is there any message you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah. I mean I always like to say that knowledge is the power and you have to learn but you also have to learn to unlearn things that you have learned mm-hmm. and then relearn as information evolves. So things that we knew 5 10 years ago may have changed how society operates constantly evolves so be open to learning and also let going of things that you have learned priorly and always be open to relearning new information and sharing it with everyone this if applied for everything will help people who are living with hiv the lgbt community and other sort of marginalized communities in the country so just with an open mind educate yourself and always operate with verified knowledge thank you shreyal for this conversation i did not call you um and discuss this conversation with you um prior to having this conversation with you because i really wanted it to be authentic and to be real and there's so much i learned by having this conversation with you and i'm sure our audience would have uh 
learn so much as well. Um, like Shreyal said, it's very important that we educate society and that we raise awareness about HIV and um, AIDS and those living with HIV. Thank you once again. Thank you for Thank having you. me and the opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, watching uh, another episode of Conversations. I will be back with another episode soon. Until then, stay safe and take care.